Welcome, my friends, to a new episode of Frameworks. And in this episode, we're going to talk about a framework for creating CCQs. And as you know, CCQs uh, stand for Concept Checking Questions. And Concept Checking Questions are used to clarify uh, meaning, whether we're teaching vocabulary or structure. But in this episode, I'm going to focus on vocabulary. Um, and in the coming episode, I'll be talking about CCQs for grammar. So first, let's talk about this framework. If I want to create CCQs, what steps should I follow? And I would say, number one, my friend, you need to know the context in your head. And what I mean by that is that as a teacher, you check your course book and you know the topic of your lesson because you need to create CCQs that would be appropriate for that topic. Someone might say, Shadi, can you clarify a bit more? Yeah, I mean, think about this. You might go to um, a word in a dictionary and then you find more than one definition because this word might have three or four meanings. Now, which one are you going to create CCQs for? So you need to be clear about your context so that you can make a good choice. So step number one, bear the context in your head. Step number two, check a couple of dictionaries. And when I say a couple of dictionaries, I mean a couple of good dictionaries. Think about dictionaries like Longman Pearson, um, Cambridge University Press Dictionary, um, Oxford uh, Dictionary, um, and the like. Right? Don't go to an unknown online dictionary that you, you don't know um, who made this dictionary, um, you, you know nothing about um, the publishing house, no you need to check a couple of trusted dictionaries. Some of my say, Shelley, but why, why a couple of dictionaries? Isn't enough to check only one? And I'd say dictionaries are uh, human works. And um, anything that is made by human lacks perfection. So um, sometimes you might find a definition um, that you might not agree with. And it happens, right? For example, um, and um, think about the word embarrassed, uh, right? And let's see uh, the definition of embarrassed in a couple of good dictionaries. So um, I'm going to visit uh, first. Let's, uh, let me just go to Cambridge Dictionary and see what Cambridge Dictionary says about this word. As you see, uh, Cambridge Dictionary defines embarrassed by saying that it means feeling ashamed or shy. Feeling ashamed or shy. That's the definition of embarrassed according to Cambridge English Dictionary. However, I kind of disagree with this because ashamed and, and, and shy are different from embarrassed. Shy is more about character and ashamed is, you know, something that we would say um, when you know um, when we when someone commits a sin or something that needs to be like a, a kind of a grave mistake. Now let's see what Longman Dictionary says about embarrassed. And as you see, my friends, um, Longman Dictionary defines embarrassed as feeling uncomfortable or nervous and worrying about what people think of you. For example, because you have made a silly mistake or because you have. Uh, or because you have to talk or sing in public. Now, for me, that makes more sense. That's a definition that I would um, accept and agree with, but, but, but not the first one. And this is why I said check a couple of dictionaries um, in order to, to make sure, okay, that this is actually the definition you want for this word in this context, and it is accurate, right? So that's step num number one, number two. So step number one is bear the context in your head. Step number two is check a couple of dictionaries. Step number three, divide the definition in the dictionary into meaningful segments. How? 
let me give you an example. Like, let's let's look again at um, the the word uh, embarrassed or the adjective embarrassed. And I'm going to use now uh, Lonman Dictionary. Right, look at this. So it says feeling uncomfortable. So that's one part now. Uh, it says um, feeling uncomfortable or nervous. That would be one part. It says worrying about people, people, what people think of you. Oh, that would be the second part. Um, because you have made a silly mistake. Oh, that would be the third part. Or because you have to talk or sing in public. Oh, that's the fourth part. So lovely. Now we have four segments of meaning ready. Okay. So again, so step number one, bear the context in your head. Step number two, check a couple of dictionaries. Then choose which definition you will go with. Three, div divide the definition into uh, meaningful segments. Four, uh, simplify the difficult words in the definition. For example, let's check segment number one. It says what? Feeling uncomfortable. Hmm. Um, if I were in your shoes, I would avoid using uncomfortable. Maybe some students might not know what uncomfortable means. So I'll try to use something easier. So feeling uncomfortable. Hmm. What else can we say? Feeling uncomfortable or nervous. So in order to do this, you can go to the same dictionary and check what comfortable means. Let's go and see. And the dictionary here says, comfortable, making you feel physically relaxed. Okay, that would help now. So getting back to embarrassed. Look at this, my friends. Mm. It says feeling uncomfortable. So I would say, okay, feeling unrelaxed. Because unrelaxed is easier than uncomfortable. Now let's check the rest of the segments. So we have then after that, worrying about what people think of you, no problem, um, because you have made a silly mistake, no problem, or because you have to talk or sing in public, no problem. This takes us to another step in our framework. So we said number one, bear the context in your head. And we said number two, check a couple of dictionaries and choose one to go with. Number three, div divide the definition into meaningful segments. And um, number four, simplify all difficult words in the definition. And number five, create a question for every segment. How? For example, look at this. Uh, feeling unrelaxed. So we can make a question like, are you relaxed? That's one. Worrying about what people think of you. So we can say, um, are you worried about what people think of you? Now, you have made a silly mistake. Have you made a silly mistake? And it goes like that. Now, let me give you a whole example how you're going to integrate all this in teaching. So um, let me tell you, my friends, um, about this story. Um, yesterday, um, a friend of mine, uh, you know, was sitting at a cafe um, and then, you know, the waiter came with uh, the guy's coffee and then when he was, while he was drinking the coffee, it was spilt all over his clothes and uh, he was wearing white. So my friend felt really... And now I'm doing what I'm trying to elicit from my students. And then if someone said embarrassed, I will start my CCQs. If someone didn't say it, then um, I will say it and then follow that with CCQs. Um, so yes, he felt really embarrassed. So when I say that my friend was embarrassed, was he relaxed? Uh, no, he wasn't. So, of course, I'm asking the questions and waiting for the answers from my students. Was he relaxed? No. No, he wasn't. Was he worried about what people might think of him? Yeah, yeah. Um, has he made a silly mistake? Yeah, yeah. 
right? So again, so this is how you use CCQs here. Now, so let's think now of another example. Now we know uh, the framework for creating CCQs. And let me say it again, bear uh, the context in your head. And number two, uh, check a couple of dictionaries, good and trusted dictionaries, and choose a definition to go with. Three, divide that definition into segments. Four, simplify any difficult words in this definition. And five, create questions. So it's a five-step framework now. Now let's try it with a word like mammal. Let's go to um, a couple of dictionaries and check the definition. So go into um, long man dictionary of contemporary English and let's go mammal and it says a type of animal that drinks milk from its mother's body when it's young human dogs and whales are mammals <coughs> let's check now uh, Cambridge what does Cambridge dictionary says about mammal and it says any animal of which the female feeds her young on milk from her own body. Most mammals give birth to live young, not eggs. Hmm. I would go with long man dictionary definition. It, it sounds easier. So let's now divide the definition into parts. So I have here a type of animal. That's part number one. That drinks milk from its mother's body when it's young. That's part two. Human dogs and whales are mammals, that's part three. And I believe there is nothing to simplify here. Everything is easy. So uh, let's now turn these into questions. A type of animal, is it an animal? That's number one. Uh, that drinks milk from its mother's body when it's young. Does it drink milk from its mother's body when it's young? Three. Humans, dogs, and whales are mammals. Are human dogs and whales mammals? Or you can say this. Which are mammals? Snakes or dogs? Ha ha ha. Right. Okay, now let me kind of put it in um, a context, you know. Um, you know those animals that usually give birth and instead of laying eggs, they, they, they have a name in English. What is it, you know? Yeah, animals that give birth, they don't lay eggs. Oh yes, mammals, lovely. Uh, so when I say uh, a mammal, uh, are we talking about animals? Yes. Hmm, uh, do these animals drink milk from the mother's body when they're young? Yes. So which are mammals, um, snakes or dogs? Dogs. So this is, this is how it goes. Now another example, um, one last example of how to create CCQs using this framework. Um, and again, uh, let's check. So we talked about a noun and we talked about um, an adjective. Let's try a verb now. And I've got the verb saunter, saunter, and um, and you know I mean that's that's not an uh, an easy verb. It's usually you read it in literature, but uh, we don't we don't use it uh, on a daily basis. We don't read it a lot in texts, right? Good. So now let's check a couple of dictionaries again. Let's start with Cambridge. Let's see what Cambridge says. Saunter. And Cambridge English Dictionary says to walk in a slow and relaxed way, often in no particular direction. Okay, now let's check what Lonman says. And Lonman says to walk in a slow, relaxed way, especially so that you look confident or proud. Oh, hmm. So we got, you know, a piece of information that is extra in Cambridge Dictionary. It says in Cambridge Dictionary, often in no particular direction. And, and often means not, it doesn't mean all the time, right? But in, in Lone Man Dictionary, it says, especially so that you look confident or proud. Hmm. 
lovely. So we can combine both dictionaries together now and let's divide all these segments. So we say to walk in a slow way. That's number one. Number two, to walk in a relaxed way. And number three, you look confident or proud. And number four, you don't walk in a particular direction. Is let's let's choose something rather than particular. However, if we're teaching Santa, I'm sure that students would know particular. But let's even simplify it. Okay. So in no particular direction, we can say no specific direction. Now, let me show you how we're going to use Santa with its CCQs um, um, in a context. You know. Um, I was at this hotel lobby and I saw this man, he was wearing a tuxedo and he looked really confident and he was walking, you know, um, here and there down the hotel lobby. The man was actually, the man was sauntering. So when I say he was sauntering, was he walking slowly or quickly? Slowly. Was he relaxed or unrelaxed? Relaxed. Did he look confident and proud? Yes. Was he going in a specific direction? No. Right. So my friends, um, um, so in this video, um, I covered uh, the framework for creating CCQs um, and uh, I focused on uh, vocabulary teaching. I hope you enjoyed uh, this episode. Thank you very much, my friends, and see you in another episode of Frameworks. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Bye-bye.